the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Now, many of us, at one point or the other, have had questions as to why God seems to use certain individuals very mightily. When you look at any territory, you find out that there are certain individuals that um, it seems God is doing business with them as far as the dispensing of his life and power and truth. They seem to be pivot in what God is doing. And yet there are others who are Christians, believers, but they always seem to be out of God's program. It looks like they don't weigh so much as far as the agenda of God is concerned. And this has brought a lot of frustration in the body of Christ because a lot of people have gone into different kinds of spiritual exercises in an attempt to upgrade themselves to become usable. But then I think that the true ingredients required to carry the power of God to be relevant as far as the move of God is concerned, many people do not seem to sustain it. So I want to just talk on three things and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I've seen people pray for days and hours, had vigils in an attempt to get the anointing in an attempt to gain spiritual power, in an attempt to access the mysteries of the world. And while that is not, um, it's not useless, but then for many people, their disappointment is that at the end of all of that program, there is still a void and there is still a barrenness. Are we together now? So they fast, they add fasting to it. I mean, there is no time in the church where men fast and pray as it is right now are we together there are ministries that literally do vigils every day every day marathon vigils for one month at a stretch yet you watch the quality of the believers that are produced from that experience and it's a cause for concern there are people who are i would call them fasting giants hallelujah and there are people who have stretched their human capacity from border to border. I know a man who I prayed for who fasted for seven days dry. Dry fast. I don't mean maybe you take juice later on and then you keep moving. Dry like nothing touches your mouth. Not even a toothbrush. This is how people have stretched in the spirit in an attempt to be used by God. The highest I've seen in my life is someone who fasted for 400 days. 400 days, non-stop. Hallelujah. I rounded the 400 day with him and I prayed with him. But as far as I know, that gentleman is still searching desperately for the power of God till now. What then is the missing link? Please pay attention to what I'm about to teach you because for some of you this will be the key that God will hand to you holy 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 holy
Hallelujah. The latest in the series of the pursuit right now is searching for the vessels that carry the anointing. I mean, once you are anointed, you are in trouble. Everywhere people see you, whether in the market, somewhere, I mean, there are all kinds of skills that are employed from those who fly and hold your leg and say, kill me, but let the anointing drop to those who will drop a seed, those who will use handkerchiefs to clean your shoes. Now, I'm not, I'm not against... Um, the expressions of their passion but i'm saying that people are desperate for the power of god and the glory of god but it looks like god is mising the power it looks like there are people who are saying lord empower me i mean give me this miracle working power this ability and 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 all of that i know so many pastors so many ministers who cry for the grace and the glory of God upon their lives. They want his presence to be experienced in their meetings. This that I'm about to teach you, the Lord taught me 10 years ago as the secret of his sustaining presence and power upon the life of a man. The Lord told me to do this and his presence and his power will remain upon my life and by the grace of God I have followed this thoroughly I have struggled to teach what I'm teaching you people this night because I've taught us that it is wasteful to supply information to people who are not spiritually prepared to receive hallelujah while I saw the gentleman who came and said they came all the way from Niger state and the ones from Makodi I am very humbled to see what God is doing through these messages within this country and in various parts of the world. But there is a secret to it. This is what I want us to understand. There is nothing that is happening that is a mistake. There's nothing that is happening that is haphazard. And if you will pay attention to what I'm teaching you, please, even those who are working, workers and all of that, do your work, but please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Hallelujah. So why is the power of God absent? Why is it that God seems to be limited to do business with many people? It looks like, it, it seems like one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 are the ones who are really mightily used by God. I used to think that it was because others were carrying out less or more spiritual exercises. But as I've grown in the things of the Spirit, I've found out that that's not exactly the reason. Ready for it? Reason number one. Reason number one. I, I, I consider this... I consider this to be the fundamental determinant of the entrance of the anointing and the power of God in the life of a man your motif and your motivation your motif and your motivation let me tell you something I have found out over the years that the state of your heart is the greatest determinant of the power and the glory of God upon your life. Beyond your fasting, beyond your prayer, beyond night vigils, beyond listening to messages, as important as those things are, the state of your heart overrides them all if you want God to do business with you. Now, so many people, well-meaning people, who want to see the miraculous power of God. They want to be mightily used by God. Lack this one thing. The motive and the motivation behind their pursuit is corrupted from beginning. So every activity they carry out is corrupted on the strength of that foundational thing. Are we together? From those who seek God because they want to build a career around ministry. Those who have applied for jobs and it looks like jobs are not forthcoming and they console themselves by saying let's go to the vineyard 
and use ministry to build a career corrupted motives are we together to those who desire the anointing to show their family members that they are not failures you were growing up and they told you that you'll be a failure in life and now you're saying lord give me the anointing to show my mother or my stepmother that i'm not a failure as well meaning as that motif is it is corrupted are we together now that's the reason why you find certain people they seem not to be engaging in as much spiritual activity in terms of physical exertion fasting prayer but it seems like god has so much interest in them he will go beyond their personal spiritual lives to demonstrate his glory upon their life motif your motivation i can tell you this and i tell you sincerely eight or nine out of every ten pastors and men of god that call me send me text messages sow seeds and are desperately looking for anointing and grace most of them their motives are corrupted are we together so i can go for 40 days fasting but god looks beyond the physical activity and he scans and judges my motive this for me has been the ultimate determinant of the kinds of people that God does business with and that he will do business with in these days. Is God speaking to us? The state of your heart. Let's look at a few scriptures. John chapter 12. Oh come, oh come Emmanuel And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom captive Israel. Rejoice. Rejoice. Emmanuel has come to us, he's Israel. John chapter 12, it says, And Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, who was raised from the dead, and the Bible says, There they made unto him supper, and Martha served. Follow carefully. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at table. Now let's watch something that happened. And then Mary took a pound of ointment and anointed the feet. The Bible says, Okay, took a pound of ointment of spikenard, pure nard, very costly. Take note, very costly. Then the Bible says that she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Are we together? And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And then something happened. Verse 4. And then one of his disciples, a man called Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, he responded to that act of worship. Verse 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now watch this. This is part of Jesus' ministerial cabinet. A woman comes and takes from her alabaster box according to one of the gospels and breaks it before his feet. Pure nerd. The Bible tells us it was her wages for one year. And she took it and broke it at his feet and used her hair that is the glory of a woman to wipe his feet. And then when other people, when Jesus was looking at the motivation of this woman, the sincere communication of her appreciation 
someone else was looking at the cost implication and the wastage are we together but he never said you wasted this he tried to angle it in a way that should look like he was concerned about the treasury of the house are we together and this is what he said verse 5 please let's go back to verse 5 why was not this ointment sold so for him you can still worship jesus another way go and sell it bring the money let's add to the treasury but his motive was so that he will have more money to be stealing are we together it was never about jesus it was never about his desire to see his master exalted are we together now judas had no business listen although he was a sincere person he wanted to use jesus the moment he came and found out that there was a flourishing ministry he looked at it carefully and saw the financial potentials that were in that ministry and he strategically positioned himself being elected the treasurer he found out that he could keep motivating people and the more they brought money to the ministry he would help himself so you would see judas at every crusade you would see judas attending to the poor collecting all the seeds to jesus you would look from that experience and say what a zealous man the first to appear in every crusade ground the one to respond to the necessity of jesus but the motive behind it was his belly are we together the next verse verse 6 this he said not that he what cared for the poor the bible says but because he was a that was his mo the motive he was looking for more money so he could steal so he angled it in a way that made it look like he was having an appetite for god the bible says and he had the back and bear what was put therein in other words if they changed judas from being a treasurer to an ordinary disciple and made thomas or peter the new treasurer all of a sudden he would not care about any sacrifice again are we together this is an example of the motive and the motivation behind so many people you would see them pray for the anointing as if they really love sick people you would see them pray for prosperity as though they really really want to help and bless people you would see them fast as they they pray for crowds and you would think they are really compassionate you would think they care so much about the people coming but at the heart of their pursuit is this self-centered demonic and many times satanic motivation are we together now how many men of god use the anointing use members use so many people to boost their ego and when they go around you see pastors gather to talk and you'll be amazed at the content of their discussion have you seen my members have you seen the jeep that this one bought for me there are 20 oil company workers in my church there are senators in my church there are this and that and that i mean we grew from 5000 to 20000 in one year great news but then what is the motivation behind it and so we use those things to scorn others we use those things to command honor when pastors come together the ones who seem to be having results or desirous of results seem to push others and sit in a position of honor that is not given by god motif motivation judas was doing what physically would have been a wise suggestion i can understand his passion because he was in the finance department are we together and so from financially speaking it would have been a still a worthy way of worship to sell it and bring the money and then the money be given to the poor but the problem was the motivation behind that statement not necessarily what he said the motivation behind it was wrong Brothers and sisters, you can fast all you can. 
you can pray all you can you can carry bottles of anointing oil carry handkerchiefs and mantles go and fly on the man of god's bed and roll there from night till morning when this adjustment of the state of your heart is not in place forget about god doing business with you especially in this end time are we together proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 solomon who was a wise man said something that is very interesting proverbs chapter 16 verse 2 is projected he said all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes but the lord weighed the spirit can we have any other version just any other available one that renders something differently the lord tests the motives he judges the content the motivation he says all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the lord weighs the spirit the thoughts and the intents of the heart in other words if i get up right now and i tell this lady to stand up and i lay hands on her and she falls under the anointing while you are clapping and say man this guy is anointed god is not impressed with that experience until he scans the motive behind it if the motive behind it was to prove a point to a few people that the anointing is still alive that experience has been corrupted as far as god's standard is concerned are we together you can raise 10 people from wheelchair and in heaven you raise only one from the second to the last the motif cancelled it by zero are we together now look when you understand this you will focus more on motif than physical experiences because it's difficult for men to discern because men judge by the outward appearance how many pastors frustrate themselves how many people frustrate themselves they think they want power they think they want grace but god has already seen the true content of their hearts you will think when they are anointed they will spend their lives serving god you will think when they are anointed they spend their lives listen i go for meetings and thank god for the honor here and there different people have their ways of responding and while i step into the meetings to sit down i see all kinds of admiration you see a lot of young people bouncing on the floor happy and just wishing and say oh god give me what you have given this person and i can sense in my spirit the field of their motives they want to be celebrities and since they cannot run like Usain Bolt, since they cannot play tennis like the Williams, they feel ministry is a cheaper route to achieve the same thing. And God says, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Anna wanted a child. I've taught us. She wanted a child so desperately, but her motive was to prove to Penina that she also had a womb and she kept going to Shiloh to pray and God never had it listen this is very scary a woman who wanted to prove she went to the house of God and cried and God said it's not enough reason for you to have a child until she gave up and said Lord this is not about Penina again I align my will to you she prayed once and a child came once 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 So many people want crowd they want power they want revelation 80 percent of the text messages that people send to me what is the secret of your anointing what is the secret of your grace what is this thing in these teachings that transform people let me tell you it's beyond prayer it's beyond fasting the motif of your heart is greater is the foundation upon which any true spiritual experience is accepted before God. this already is a deliverance for somebody hearing me because it's, it's a call for you to find out you have been engaging sincerely in many spiritual attempts but you may never find the power of god until your motif the state of your heart is arrived
the sincerity and the love that you have for God and his people. The sincerity and the love that you have. How sincere is your motive? As far as God is concerned and the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life. He does not stand on the sheep so that they will see him. A good shepherd is not one who prays in tongues. A good shepherd is not just one who walks in miracles. A good shepherd lays down his life, constrains himself, inconveniences himself for the success, the progress. How many pastors do that? How many pastors rejoice that God is lifting people? How many pastors rejoice? You see, when you understand this, you will at once, listen, at once. I remember one time, I think I was, I, I, I don't know where exactly, and we were sitting down and one pastor, I was talking with a group of pastors, and then somebody passed and then they tapped in and said, that's, that's apostle. The apostle Joshua Selman, you'll be hearing about, that's him. And he came around and sat down in less than 10 minutes. This man was telling me, oh, he bought his suit, so, so, so amount. God has been faithful in the ministry. They've been seeing all kinds of explosion. And later I asked the other person, I said, sorry, what is the membership strength of this church we're talking about here? And it was not even up to 35. Are we together now? So you see that this person came and was talking like this in hope to get honor and respect because he has been taught that when you try to create that picture and you package yourself, and make it look like, look, I'm an overseer. I'm not just a pastor. I need you to know that I'm overseeing something. You need to realize that there are people under me. There are pastors around. You say, oh, really? We see what God is doing. Please, let me advise you. Get out of those wrong and devilish associations. I'm telling you this. You may be criticized, but it's better to be criticized than do business with God. You never find me in a company of all this rubbish by the grace of God no I never look down on any man whether you are pastoring one church or two churches and I never give you any unnecessary honor whether you are pastoring one million people are we together now there are certain people here if God will give you one tenth of the anointing you are crying for God will have to summon prayer warriors to pray for your salvation, not even the church again, just to make sure that your salvation is protected. Are we together? So many people. We have seen many people. Let's use the music industry for instance. We have seen people who when they started, they, they ran around pastors pray for me give me anointing give me this and that and the moment god lifts them a little they change in a way that you will not imagine are we together now and you find out that their motivation is no longer the passion for god it is where honorarium will come where the paycheck is fattest is where the holy spirit is directing them are we together so if they give you a ministration in one small youth fellowship or where there are 30 zealous youths genuinely hungry for God and they give you another invitation in Victoria Island where you are flying business class are we together now and a Range Rover Sports is what is receiving you from the airport to the hotel and you sit down and calculate you say I've suffered in this life even God knows I've suffered in this life then you take all kinds of selfies and snapshots of yourself and send it and write on that God is faithful. God is faithful, yes, but the motive behind that statement is corrupt. What you are really saying is watch my life and be intimidated. You are not saying, you are just using a Christian term. Are we together? Motif. I watch with pain in my heart because I know that God is still looking for men and women. There is no man of God that can bring the revival we are talking about single-handedly. 
the best of any man is an effective member god is looking for an army not a person if it looks like there is only one person is because many people are not ready it's not because god is mising his grace i tell you this so many people praying and crying use me oh god let me change my territory use me as an agent of revival all kinds of people trying to play all kinds of gimmicks to see the power of god come but when he searches their hearts he sees that their motives are not right how many ladies want to marry men of god you would think it's because they are they care about the burden of the vineyard you would think they love the man and they say oh god let me live my life ministering to this man the way they talk you'll be motivated you say you can imagine her passion have you eaten sir have you really eaten are you okay Huh? you have been losing weight these days are you okay but the truth of it is it's not any passion for any sheep is that the last time they checked their television and saw how mama looked mama of whichever ministry it was admirable people will come and kneel down before you and say mommy just speak a word and drop a check and they say if this is what mama represents i'm, I'm up for it i mean i i take it with all gladness and gratitude so it makes the sister to always establish her presence in the prayer meeting. When there is Bible study, the sister is there. Are we together? When there is any fasting program, she's there. She comes fasting but holds cooler for the pastor. Now, there's nothing wrong with cooler ministry. It's very useful. Uh, come on, very, very useful. Are we together? So that I don't make ladies punish a lot of pastors from do what God has asked you to do to the man of God. Are we together? When food finished for Elijah, when Elijah's food finished and water dried, God sent him immediately to a woman to take care of him. So that ministry is very biblical. Are we together? Motivation. How many people in church are looking for ordination and PA? So, and they are the first to come and greet the pastor in the morning pastor how are you i want to tell you what is happening in this church it's like you have been very busy but i've been covering for you i can i can tell you exactly what has been happening the last time you went there is a stubborn lady in the worship team i don't know exactly it's not happening here i can tell you at least not not to this level praise the lord so i can give this example generally speaking and then once you talk you now say pastor uh, there's a message that I prepared. Anytime you are not free, you are busy, I can always stand in for you at the conference or the crusade. You will look at this guy and believe that he's very zealous. The pastor will say, I really have someone covering my back. But it's because this person went and met his uncle and the uncle said the job is not coming. And he sat down and calculated and said, which one is the fastest route to establishment? Masters, PhD, I can start up a business. It will take five years before it will be established. But if I partner with this man, I'm sure that in six months, God will wipe my tears. So he comes. And you will find unusual passion. Are we together? Motive. Whenever you see a man who is very close to the anointing, and never receives it his motive stopped him from receiving that's what happened to Gehazi by the grace of God when you see the heads of departments of this ministry and many people and other people who are connected to this ministry when you look at the life of those who are connected in reality you even those who have never seen my face you will see a reproduction of grace i have met people in meetings i sat down and i thought i was hearing myself i was like my goodness who is this guy but there are others who are around the anointing around but their motive oh look let me tell you something about god he is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents hallelujah Elisha walked with Elijah 
for a very long time. He would have been, I mean, um, um, Gehazi. He would have been prophet Gehazi. But you can see his motive. One time Naaman came and when Naaman was healed, Elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go. And Naaman, like Judas, you see it now. Naaman said, we can't let this thing just go like that. And he ran after him and said, wait, my master just changed his mind. Can you offload some of these things? I will handle it. And when he came back, he just kept quiet like nothing happened. And Elisha looked at him and said, was my spirit not with you? Sometimes, members in church are really foolish. If a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage and see what is happening in the lives of people, what makes you believe he cannot discern your motive? Are we together? When I talk to pastors and I counsel them and they bring me problems, maybe them, assistants, um, other people around are fighting, I look at them and I say, come on now. Are you not anointed? Where did you keep the anointing? Do you drop it just at the altar? Can you not discern? Everyone say motive. Say it again, motive. Your motive and your motivation. Sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ. Sincerity. Sincerity of motif is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives. Sincerity of motif. Our motifs are perverted. Our motifs are corrupted. I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one. When he told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one, I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes. He thought it was a testimony. I said, I can't understand. What would I say? He said, Truly, he was in a program. He happened to be like a PA. Or some not PA, but you know, those who and see, please, if you are close to a man of God, go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity. You can be the closer you are to a man of God, the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in. Are we together now? Meeting. I never get too familiar with the Holy Spirit. I love him. The Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me. But at every point, I make sure that that sense of honor, that my motive is always aright. When I'm praying for a meeting, oh Lord, I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting. He sees my heart and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name. I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time? Listen, and I'm talking to all of us, especially for those who are pastors. When was the last time your motive was aright? You see why David was called a man after God's heart? David would say, search my heart. Not search my throne. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. Because my heart can be deceitful. So many people have missed out on the will of God. That's the reason why you find out that in many churches, after a while, people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative. When you call somebody and say, promise, go and work in welfare. Ken, work in prayer department. Mama, work in ushery. Mama says, ushery. It's me now that you are giving ushery. These guys in prayer department, at least the honorarium, there's a possibility of honorarium coming. Welfare, there's no possibility of any honorarium coming. Are we together? 
have you seen people lobby for positions in church you've seen that happen this is the reason they find you know how a funnel is when you pour water the funnel moves in a direction and so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing and they leech themselves around that place and god sees their hearts says your motif is corrupted i like you to in a very sincere way listen cry out and ask the lord to search your motive for desiring his presence for desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Yeah, search me through and through till my heart becomes. When was the last time you listened to a man of God, his prayer content, and you had him praying and crying for the sheep? Oh God, bless these people. Oh God, increase them. If it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me leave. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motif and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy and you see the desire you see the desire you i mean you see the hunger every time they say a man of god is coming to town you see so many people they go and sit in front you would think they want the anointing for a clean motive sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors I told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep it shows that you don't care about them every time i come in for koinonia and i see crowds of people and i see people standing if i see just one person standing i can feel it in my heart sometimes i'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say look we are doing our best there is only so much we can do i i feel as though i should stand and let the people i i just would not interrupt the work of the various departments but i see it especially when we are done and i see people leaving and while we are going and i see some people trekking in groups happily through the night my heart is moved listen compassion is a big key to walking in the anointing compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people it's the secret to the anointing are we together if sam is sick right now and i come to sam and i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed 
I will carry some by myself to Shika because I am so interested in his healing my ego notwithstanding but a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave Sam to die are we together so that it will be through his hand how many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church are, are we together how many people will dare not give a testimony about what God used another man of God to do in their life before the overseer he says so you are trying to say I'm not anointed now honor your man of God respect him don't come and cause trouble between pastors but at the same time any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors that's the truth about it but it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth the pastor will note in fact it's not even the pastor there is already a system to punish disloyalty are we together motif motif and some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now the moment somebody comes and says wow god bless me with this revelation and it did not come from you all of a sudden you start looking and say how oh, are we sure it's correct let me see it motif if what you want is celebration and being a celebrity if that is your prime if you just want celebrity please go and act for him if you want the anointing if you want to serve God genuinely your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture I worship you great I am you are mighty in this place I worship you king of kings you are the strong and breasted one I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motif. I say it again. Align your motif for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motif for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motif. Align your motif. Motif is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people what is the state of your heart I know you are well meaning but what is the state of your heart sister it's not like God cannot give you a great man of God to marry but what is the motif behind your heart if the motif of your heart is to serve God and to stand by that man to be a blessing to partner with him to lift up the banner of Christ in the nations I guarantee you God will not withhold it from you but if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around and look like you are more than other ladies and so Ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it I will help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because God is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God. He gave the blood of his very son for it. And so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this, I want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. 
I began to pray recently and I was asking the Lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of Christ don't last and the Lord showed me something that scared me I want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us please open your eyes and let me teach you something watch this if I'm holding money so I have your attention now come sir watch this if Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area are we together now and then he comes to meet me as a man of God and I tell him Michael give me 1000 naira and I will pray for you and I will sow a seed I guarantee you in the name of the Lord Jesus you just cancel that spiritual transaction anointing will never has never been an instrument in exchange for money are we together now I can bless him listen let me tell you why many people especially many young pastors and young prophets are fro their, their lives look like they are fake some of them are not fake the truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of God no sir is God speaking to us I can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life he can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book a pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project that's all right but where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft if you are doing it here stop it now let me tell you now stop it not later now stop it between you and god let it never happen you will never see the power of god that way remember in the book of acts the gentleman who wanted to buy power from peter and he said your money perish with you pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit i know we need money ministries need money don't get me wrong i know i know that pastors need money they have families but not to compromise with the anointing the anointing will bring you money big time people will surprise you but it's not going to be this way are we together all those things where you carry offering basket and as i heal you you drop your own whether you call it free will or whatever if it came in demand for the anointing brothers and sisters if you ever saw result it was the mercy of god not a justification of what happened this is one thing that i've seen that is eating people in the church you do not use the anointing for merchandise no you will be blessed you will be changed look let me tell you bless people and allow them to decide to honor you they will surprise you how much can i charge you for a breakthrough how much can i charge you for miracles let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you i ask you to pay me ten thousand 20,000. Let's even assume that I ask you to pay me 50,000 and you bring it. I have received wages, not favor, wages. But by the time I bless you and I leave you to the God that sent me, He Himself will move you and you will come with 1 million naira, 10 times what I would have demanded, and you will bless me. It's impossible to be a true servant of God and bless people without God moving them to bless you it's no it never happens if nobody is blessing you it's because your anointing is not notable enough are we together this is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry 
because it seems like it's working someone gets into ministry and in four months he has 10 jeeps he raised offering for himself and 10 people gave and there are rich people you see people are desperate so whatever i said i beg please take the jeep and heal me i'm tired of all this trouble but god is watching and you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels and god says i can't take you international with this attitude you will misrepresent me your motive is corrupted there have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry especially seeds of kinds and when they bring it because i never use them but i just bless them and we release it sometimes we give it to people sometimes we honor the workers with it i look at it when i see maybe especially gadgets or some things and i find out that it's very expensive and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever i'm even moved and i say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but i have not once not twice i've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and i pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us your hand is in a mode to collect consistently it doesn't matter how it comes no that's not the way god blesses people in the kingdom is god helping us to examine motives motives how many pastors have trouble rich men in their church visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed i, I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing the anointing is provoked yes but it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power. Anytime, listen. It's not even every giving that is worth collecting. When you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright, you honorably decline. There are people who give you in such a way that the day you, as you collect it, you throw away your honor. Preserve the, how much is 10 naira? How much is 20 naira? Tea and bread. And you lose everything because of it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing i hate the way we talk about money all the time in church it, it can, i mean have you seen men of god who preach a very solid message solid message and when the spirit of the people are lifted it, it just now coins to say in conclusion there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story. Because this story would demand a, a response. There was a man. And then so on and so forth. And they tell you all the story. And at the end of it, the man now says, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of that. And um, you, I'm going to bless you stand here with five thousand not if god is leading you or if you are led to sow ten thousand you you're a rich man you can't bring five thousand for me stand here with ten thousand and the moment you start doing that you may not be fake but you are driving the, the, the fire of god from your life and if you don't take time it will become ichabod the departure of the glory that's why certain men of god eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, 
I receive grace to be sincere and to be true. I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motif. How many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others? They are tired though, but because they saw another colleague, they fire on. On a very good day, they would have rested if the person is not there. I've seen people who pray and they are sleeping. Once they hear the door, they just stop shouting. To mean you should come and see me in the look, 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 look. Don't play games with the anointing. You must be true if you want the power of God. Number two. You want to carry the glory of God upon your life. Your level of passion and hunger for God. Your level of passion and hunger there's a song in my spirit she's your mentor now come and sing it if you know spirit lead me where my truth let me walk upon You know the song? That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. In the presence of my Savior, Spirit lead me where we are born. Let me walk upon the waters. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the walls. Your level of passion and hunger. Brothers and sisters, seeking God is a full-time pursuit. There's nothing like part-time seeking God. Are we together? No, you don't seek God part-time. You don't seek God with your spare time, sorry. You don't seek God with the remaining time you have. After you make money, after you marry, after you give birth to children, the balance of it, you now say, oh yeah, God, take. No, no, no. The jealousy of God fights anything that is above him. Even if it's what he gave you, he will still fight it. Listen, God can give you a thing that he will still fight it tomorrow. The moment it rises above him, his jealousy begins to fight it immediately. When the Bible says God is a jealous God, take that word very seriously. your passion psalm 42 verse 2 listen pursuit is the proof of passion pursuit is the proof of passion every time you have passion towards anything you will seek it and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is the psalmist. A psalm communicating passion. Are we together? If this is my wife, 
if this is my wife watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place I should run and give her a big hug and say, sweetheart, I missed you. How are you? Just me. What has happened? Passion. If a call is coming, I ignore the call because I'm trying to communicate passion. If you must be prompted to love God and to seek God, it's because you are not passionate enough. Anything you are passionate about, you have time for it. My brother, that's why this night after Koinonia, as late as it is, you are still going to escort the lady to her room. The reason is because you have passion. Are we together? There are brothers after Koinonia right now. They will even enter bus. There is a fire they themselves cannot explain. They say, let's go. What is boss? It will kill the time we have for our discussion. And the lady stands. Brothers and sisters from here to North Gate will look like five minutes. And they say, we are even here. That's passion. But let let me tell you to escort somebody you know i mean a man let me ask you to escort your colleague by the time you get to that shop you say are you biking or we are walking because you love the person jesus brotherly love but there is no passion that fire is not there have you seen a lady 12 30 the guy is shaking and he says let me try flashing her he flashes once and she pity say i'm sorry let me start by apologizing say for what Say, I, you, you sound sleepy. Say, I was just stretching. But the truth is, she was sleeping. Everybody say passion. Say fire. That's the name of that experience. If you don't have that thing, listen, listen. If as you are sitting down right now, this is not your feeling for God, you need a retreat. I'm telling you the truth. It's a sign. Don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream. You need a retreat very quick. That's what it takes. There must be an obsession. That's the word, really. If you are not yet obsessed about God, forget about His power in your life. It must be an obsession. And by the way, let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling. If you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere, careless, easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses watch how people act and treat football man you is about to play match 3 30 by 2 o'clock the person is there with singlet already arguing are we together arguing one hour before the time and then they sit down in the place of argument and they say if you did not start watching football from 1993 don't join us because you don't even know what it we need somebody with a historical perspective and they're arguing and the person is mentioned it's called passion the moment the match starts the person is in front sweating but remaining there thirsty but remaining there are we together a point comes there are guys there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say i'm not going out this sweat we will die here with this sweat i must watch this match it's called passion now come to the house of god and see the coldness the coldness the coldness when an average believer tries to show that i'm a little serious with god we just say pastor are we together or mama it's a shame Bless you. it's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about God until your love for God makes someone around you uncomfortable you don't love God enough yet that someone can look at you and say Kai, oh, well, carry your madness and leave my presence 
every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in are we together less as fair lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life there is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit i'm chasing after you no matter what you know the song i will keep bringing songs that i my spirit i don't know the song so much but if you can help me any one of you if you don't know it i'm chasing after you no matter More and more, more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. It's important. To what degree do you seek him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what he has done to me, but I pray he will do it to you. Amen. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No. Anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some? No! Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heart beat for God. More and more. 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 Psalm 69 verse 9. Let me show you something very powerful. There is a term I've seen in the Bible but I've hardly studied it. Hardly studied it. But I studied it recently and I was amazed. Everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9. One to read. For the zeal of thine house had eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me. Listen, let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to him that they can see. So the anger they have for him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love him. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says the zeal. This was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The zeal of thy house has consumed me. The zeal of thy house. That a man can be so consumed with the things of God. It has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not. zeal the zeal of the lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly listen listen when was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again because you are thinking about the kingdom you are thinking about his majesty something about him now you have me and now i'm forever changed i've abandoned everything i've ever known now i surrender my life is not mine you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you you are the first, the last, beginning and the end. 
In you I leave and have my being. There is absolutely nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing compares to you. I don't know the other part, but you are everything. You are everything. everything is you. Everything is you. you are everything. Everything is you. Sing it to him from your heart. He is everything. Everything, everything is you. Everything is you are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money, until you love Him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17, when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple, they remembered that the seal of the Lord seal is like an anointing. It will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go. Seal. The same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says, sorry, why are you here? Say, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for grace. Say, is it compulsory? It's late. He say, please. If you will not support my agenda, leave this place. Because the rain is not in. Say, what is rain? Am I sick? It's called zeal. If you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know? Every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally, as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed. I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia, but the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you that it will make you passionate so that when you get a job you will not leave him are we together so that when you marry you will not leave him so that when you no longer have prayer points do you know it is possible god will solve your problem there is no personal prayer point what then will you do when he solved everything the reason why many people are drawing after him i'm telling you this sincerely is because of the load of problems they have If God solves all your problems, will you still seek him? If, there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love him? I can understand why you love him because you need him for your defense next week. You need him for graduation. You are trusting he will manipulate the result in a way that you will leave and be in peace. So I can understand your sin. But what happens? Listen. You always know those who never had zeal for God by their commitment after God meets their needs. Not before he meets it. After. When a lady is looking for a husband desperately, I can understand why you are around for night vigil. But what if a husband comes? And a rich one. And then, one month after your marriage, you are pregnant. Every testimony you want has been given. And to hell with God until another problem comes. Shade is here with her kids, raising them. She's been like this for many years in this ministry, way before marriage. Raising her kids. Her son is very interesting. He can mimic me almost verbatim. This boy you are saying. Take it! Or this and that, and in his own little way, but he's growing. 
some of us it took the grace of God to drag you back to the house of God the money you got before has finished so you came you you came in the name of thanksgiving but the truth is you are only thanking God because you are aware that in the next two weeks whether you thank him or not there's going to be a problem and so you have come to the house of God I love him whether he answers my prayer or not I love him whether he ever anoints me or not koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God the results in my life are too small a reason fall in love with him to that extent I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again falling in love with you falling in love with you Psalm 63, verse 1 and 3. Fall in love with him and you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways. Fall in love with him genuinely beyond the need for things. Give me tea, give me bread. Fall in love with him genuinely. And I'm telling you, you will see God answer your thoughts before they become prayer points. Psalm 63. Oh God, thou art my God, not our God, my God. Early, early, I'm so passionate about you. When I wake up, you are my obsession. And so I seek you early. My soul thirst for thee my body my flesh longs after you do you know lust is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards god lust lust what you call lust immorality lust is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner but because the person is standing where God is. So you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. And say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. Most times when I go back after Koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. God does not want an affair. 
Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. Desire and I long to worship you. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. I want to talk about the third point but the Holy Spirit is stopping me because these points that I've said enough God wants to do something in our midst this thing has pleased the Lord this thing I have taught I know when the Lord is pleased over something would you just pray and just pray in the spirit this is well pleasing to the Lord tonight it's an incense of worship it's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Would you dance your ministry powerful I tell you would you dance with me oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs would you dance with me oh One more time. Yeah. Would you dance with me? The love around my soul. Hallelujah. Listen. This is the secret of my life. I love him and I pursue him I seek him as a job 
I seek his presence as a full-time assignment. Let me tell you the secret of power. Beyond your fasting and your prayer, have a genuine motive. No matter how wrong you are, let your motive be true. No matter what you don't know, let your motive be true. Your motive is greater than your actions. Your motives are stronger than your actions. And then seek him. Seek him. You will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love. Listen, listen, listen. If these two kids are my children, by the time I'm done, you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with Apostle. All they know is Father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after Koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. They just pass you and rush to come and hug me. They are coming to hug their father. They have no business with whether whatever. To them it's not a puzzle. To them it's someone they love. Take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality. Come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come. Past the place where prayer warriors stop. Past the place where fasting giants stop. Past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber. It's a place where only lovers enter. Even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber. Even fasting giants don't enter. The Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and it has not occurred in the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. Them that are obsessed. Listen. You will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring results. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing in your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together the apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy being naked and unashamed are we together if you do not get to that point where you can be open to god and naked and unashamed there is deceit somewhere in your relationship if i'm going out with you and i password some messages in my phone and I'm afraid of you accessing it. Listen, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together? Genuine passion. We are going to pray. God is going to visit us very briefly. But we are going to pray. To worship you I live. To worship you I live. I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.
give me you I don't care what it is it must wait Lord give me you relationship can wait jobs can wait anointing can wait give me you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the next five to ten minutes, there will be a very strange impartation in this place. This is why the Lord stopped me. And listen, aside from several activations that will happen, one of the major impartations that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways. Listen, listen. Many of you, what will happen to you tonight, it will become as if you have become a madman. Something will come upon you. Something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions, proportions that you have never seen. It's a dimension of love. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you Falling in love with you Again and again I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you Again and again Falling in love with you, I keep falling in love with you, falling in love with you. One more time, yeah, I keep falling in love with you. more than ministry, more than the desire for power, more than the desire for fame and greatness. Lift your hands. I tell you, something mighty will happen to you. The zeal of the Lord. 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 The zeal of the Lord will consume you. It will eat you up like a cancer. As I begin to sing, it will be like an impartation from my left to my right and outside. It's like an initiation to a realm of love. And now, I am desperate for you. Go ahead, oh great one. And bring your seal upon people. And I, yeah. Yeah. And I, lift your hand. Father, I pray, let a strange anointing fall upon your people. At the count of three, there will be mighty impartation, love for God. It will come heavy upon you. One, two, three, take it now. Take it now. Take it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Everywhere in this place, take it right now. Fire is a fire. And a seal for God is a fire 
and a zeal for God a fire a passion for the house of God a passion for the things of God pray just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. ask him Lord let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me your hands lift your hands I hear my spirit visions and dreams visions and dreams a mantle for visions and dreams prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place Lord right now where are those people let that mantle fall upon them visions and dreams take it now take it now take it now take it now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus visions and dreams you will hear his voice in the night visions and dreams Shake 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm hearing my spirit, spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion. In lives and mysteries. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle. Like an anointing. That gives precision. As many people who are supposed to walk in this wherever they are in the name of Jesus visit them right now 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 you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh Kadosh you are mighty on your throne Zion's King Kadosh Kadosh You are mighty on your throne Oh sing Thou fountains of the deep Cry out Kadosh You are mighty on your throne Break forth Thou spirit of the deep You are mighty on your throne. 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 You see, listen, listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed. It is how you do it. It's not doing certain things that make people succeed. I want to pray for you. I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Praise the Lord. I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak. May the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit there is a grace that lifts men you can try you can struggle you can beg you can connect no. see every time listen every time you see consistent results regardless of the situation there is an anointing please 
learn this there is an anointing there is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ God will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension I pray for character for all of you see this is usually the problem listen let me I'm, I'm teaching you are learning the most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing God and understanding his ways God is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah God bless you John chapter 3 verse 16 let's just look at scripture quickly and then we'll pray there is a lot that God wants to do tonight these guys have already stared the anointing and you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared it doesn't stop he doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter John chapter 3 verse 16 I like you all to be sensitive the anointing has been stared up in this place many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is the moment your eyes sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eyes sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of God starts moving it doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of Jesus I'm hearing the sound of thunder I know this is not physical I'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do I see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on I'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels I'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times I see these kinds of angels 
I'm seeing them walking inside and outside, ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families skatapakatabaratabash <laughs> direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the lord is saying take it out lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as i'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as i speak by the power of the holy spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation i pull it out this is a miracle service I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are
begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside lord we receive what you are doing yeah. sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them. You are five in all. You are five in all. Please, when you identify them, they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says he gave his only begotten son. This we can take it from there. That, that statement he gave his only begotten son. Is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Are we together now? Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. Now. And never return. In the name of Jesus. Release her family. Release. I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. So the Bible says, he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says, for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? Until the resurrection of man, he was the only begotten. Please listen. You see, everything about this Bible was pointing to this very revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything. The book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of a formula or a principle. So the law the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No. Preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me. This family or minister to you. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But 
the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am I will love you. You are the only one that I gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave, like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ a life that is crucified with Christ are we together now and then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago we know it as the passion of the Christ it started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him John chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. 
if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know I have the power to free you he, ah, 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 ah. he said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words I was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about God our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down I'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down I'll call you now they're all looking at me um, sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron Kelvin just get somewhere that they can sit around and I'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first turn back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion
but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last name you still would not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read downward i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life 
that's the most important part the life of God I'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the Bible says according to the book of Hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the Bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess uh, of, of justice begins to speak I will not fight it but remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven. We see that coronation. The psalmist gave us a revelation. And from Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says a name, an office, an identity was given to him in heaven. To sit upon that throne. Are we together now? And the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption, man's vindication must pass through him. Meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you, but I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything, but out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. It's an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive. Because we are in him. So my life it's no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen. My peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory 
is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father... A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye, the multi millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, um, what do we call it, uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believes that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. Is the 
Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence. Borrow money from... Uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i said take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no I'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. 
The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it. You look at it. But you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like mere men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said he Farred not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters, because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey 
wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens, when I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging, I'm not under any curse, I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ 
and I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction. Persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it as a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up your faith. He calls it your faith. So what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take. Based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line 
it's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looks for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus what is healing I gave Jesus what is witchcraft if I did not if I spared my son then you will know that there are some things I can spare but I carried my son I gave him and now I have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking God this my this I've been bleeding for six months non-stop and God said if I spared not Jesus I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen. Jesus said, Father, reconsider. The Father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus. It's like a man, listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said, I'm a just person and he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, oh God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. 
the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please say, Jimmy, sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there and he, he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, he said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, listen. I give unto you. What did he have? He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was there. Sit down. He was, nothing happened. Why? Response. Did he believe Peter? Yes. Did he get a miracle? No. Why? He, he could not respond. And the Bible says, when Peter saw him, he said, who taught you faith? He held his hand and said, respond. 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 And the Bible says, Peter held his hand and he leaping stood. The power of God is released at the point of response. Not before. Never before. At the point of response. When I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You ask us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me 
he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat. keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice 
the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah I pray for you I declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses I don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of Jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us I'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah I like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say Lord my time for visitation is here I won't give up no I won't give up I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on Till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep pressing on Until my change comes Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them Let's do it quickly please One minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the lord jesus christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants you to just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there's a God that answers prayers here remember we spoke about faith those outside ushers help them if I were you I'll begin to prophesy over my request and say I wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life <laughs>
Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your requests very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you, it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. See the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open. Please pass the prayer request very quickly. Once we start, we're just going to move. Um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing, please make sure you get ready so that when it's time, we'll just do that very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Very quickly. And then um, we'll be able to minister to people. No matter what your condition is, one of the things that we're going to be releasing today, listen, we had an encounter. Um, we just returned from Ekiti State. It's a lovely place. And um, listen, something really happened. As they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti, we passed a small village. Please listen. A small village, the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State. And I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life. I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping here. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in equity. And we're going back to the north. But we discerned that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then... A lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language. And my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, 
appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said we should follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song I don't know what it was I don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know I was I don't know if I was sharing with them I felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as I was feeling I knew I got this thing immediately she got it I told her I said let's snap I held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and I said I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i mean, i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years, alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. And I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, if you can be 190 and not be able to talk, but you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me
Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray. Because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families. Altars that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not, don't just fall and stand up. Begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness. And it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore I pray, every spirit, every altar, every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying He is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies Jakatarata, mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 
right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray Shabba baba in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us. Upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus. We decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb. Receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high. Receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. 
in the name of Jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of Jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart Lord, you know that I wanted this not for self, but for the house. At 70, you are still standing strong. At 90, you are still moving strong. Until you get to 120, no devil takes your life. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. The force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all 
Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I will never forget. You know, Jimmy knows the story. In 2007, I remember that time I went to collect a loan from a bank. Remember the story? I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person. And I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a mantle. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment, you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity, receive it right now. Oh, come on, your amen is not loud enough. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. The Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background, they may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life. From even people who can give birth to you, begin to receive it. Strange honor in high places. Strange honor in high places. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you have started, listen, something just came in my heart. Whatever you have started that ended prematurely, because this is what I'm, there is an anointing for what I'm telling you. Whatever you start, I don't care what it is, whether it is relationship or whatever, and it ended but not by God, we put life back to it right now. I say it again whatever you started that ended but not by God by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah give God praise my goodness I wish we had time I wish we had time dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.